we starting up again? Hopefully. Come on, connect up. Okay, guys, uh, we're back up again, but it seems like there's something going on um, with the OBS, with the servers. I don't know what it is. Uh, when I tried to start the stream, it was uh, it took a while for it to start up, and I just got this disconnected OBS disconnected and did a reconnect on its own. So um, hopefully we're not going to have that happen again. Uh, but if it does, if it doesn't connect on right away, then what I'll do, I might stop the stream after a while and then start it again or something like that, or we'll figure something out. Um, some people got kicked off. Uh, there are a few people logged on and then we got kicked off. So that's unfortunate. Hopefully that's not going to continue. So we'll give another couple of minutes for people got kicked off to come back um, come on OBS hold on hold on we gotta do some mathematics yeah about uh, half the people got kicked off I believe so we'll give a little bit of time now I know there was uh, before we get started I'm just gonna it's working all right for me right now okay cool thanks Oh, we're back. Nice. Okay, slowly people are coming on again. Okay, we'll give people a <laughs> Chicho. Hi, Monty. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. We're having a little bit of connection problems, so we're giving everyone a little bit of time to connect up. There's one thing I'd like you to go over as far as math goes, but I don't know what it's called. <laughs> What sort of math? You know what? Um, high school math, uh, excluding calculus and uh, hardcore probability statistics, and I don't want to do any combinatorics and uh, permutations. That's my weak point, and I have to sort of do a review before uh, <laughs> I feel comfortable enough to answer more of the hardcore problems. Okay, and here, let me take down the sign. Um, from the last math stream so i guess we're going to start right now hopefully more people are joining in i'm not sure what the numbers are but i'm going to take this off to start shortly so we're going to assume we're going to start right now and we have i have two angles for the camera one is this one that we're going to talk about any pre calvin <laughs> pre calvin um well pre calc well pre calvin i guess uh, you could say pre hobbs that we calvin by himself but uh pre-calc for sure we can do pre-calc pre-calc is uh almost everything for me is pre-calc as far as i'm concerned so for sure we're going to do some pre-calc um but let me lay down what is two plus two well depending uh, on the way you think about it it could be anywhere from just the simplest version anywhere from four to zero if you're talking about vectors <laughs> this car is like 76 <laughs> okay um but this is one angle that we're going to use with the cameras and this is the other one which is the one we're going to do mathematics on if people have questions and stuff definitive integrals i'm not going to do any integration um i'm not going to do any calculus Okay, I have to do serious review for calculus, relearn a lot of the material um, because I haven't taught calculus. It was, you know, it's being taught very s select schools have them and they're for AP students. And I've worked with some students that are taking calculus in my area and the calculus that they're teaching is just memorization. So it's crap. Um, so I've stayed away from calculus for too long now. So I need to refresh my calculus and relearn a lot of the material okay so it's going to be a while before we get into the calculus but we can definitely do pre-calc but one thing i like to do is i laid out some stuff i have a big test when i get back from spring break what's the test on uh, spencer oh integrals oh integrals integrals much more difficult than uh, taking derivatives sorry sorry uh if you catch me in about 
calculus we'll probably get there in about three to four years uh, maybe sooner if i can kick this into full time and certain things have to fall into place for me to kick it into full-time mode but uh, i know it seems like full-time and it is sort of i'm taking all that pretty heavy load right now doing a fair bit of strings and stuff uh yeah huge test on it oh man i feel you i feel you when i was taking calculus um didn't really have any good calculus teachers um in school uh didn't have it in high school then it wasn't even offered in high school and when I got to university, they were crap. I just learned calculus from uh, from books. <laughs> Most of my mathematics I learned from books. I didn't have any real good math teachers. I had one good math teacher that was in grade nine, and it wasn't because she was a good math teacher. It was because she was a good teacher, right? She was uh, she was a little nun that was like four feet eight, and she really cared, and she was she was fantastic. She was. It was a pleasure to be in her class right she was a very nice person um, but what I'd like to do is uh, I'm gonna show you what I've laid down just to touch touch on just in case some of the people um, that asked me these questions on the last stream show up and just in case people want to go down this this Avenue okay so I'm gonna do some pop-ups right now I laid down some stuff I sort of went for a little walk I thought about how we're gonna start this up and whatnot uh, most of my teachers in public school have been pretty bad especially the math teachers yeah it's it's across the board uh, the last time I saw I came across a good math teacher from my students that I do private and group sessions with um, was probably 14 12 14 years ago 15 years ago okay one of them retired there was two good math teachers that I came across one of them retired one of them had a nervous breakdown and she stopped teaching which was unfortunate which was unfortunate they were both very good they were both very good um, but let me ask her a couple of questions that came up last time okay one of them was someone that mentioned or asked a question calc always trips me up never had a decent teacher for it uh, one thing you want to keep in mind and keep for calculus if Spencer's still here and Zen calculus just as a teaser calculus is the introduction of time into our functions it's basically looking at the rate of change how function changes over time and it takes that into consideration right that's the you know I could do a little bit more intro to it but I rather not because I want to fill in the gaps properly okay but last time we did the stream, there was one person that came on and asked what math is good for, right? And because I am have a lot of things on my plate, there's a lot of things I'm managing, it didn't, I didn't remember that I put out two videos in 2010 or so, around that period, where I put out these two videos to answer, you know, provide some answers to that specific question. What's math good for? And part one of that video ba, 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 math important is this thing here still here first stream of yours i've been able to catch okay sweet i hope you enjoy i'm about to give you a little lowdown of one thing we might discuss right now just to give you the flow of thought it might interest you it's fine man my fundamentals uh, trip me up just as much yeah pre-calculus is ridiculously important most people that have problems in calculus is because they they have gaps in pre-calculus when I was studying calculus that was one of my problems okay but as far as the person that asked the question why mass of math is important in 2010 I put out two videos the first part was this and you can do this I loaded these up on the language of mathematics playlist and this is when I was creating content for the language of mathematics and math in real life and I sort of explained gave five reasons or six reasons why math is important as far as I'm concerned and in the next video part two of this thing I you know sort of went on a little rant explaining why math is important to our society so if anyone's interested in as to why math is important in this video which is if you just do Chicho language of mathematics video number 137 it'll pop up it'll give you sort of a 
a feel for you know why some of the reasons why mathematics is important I'm hardly on algebra too okay well we're gonna cover one thing right now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you just a progression from this right so today I was sort of trying to lay out what we could talk about in this stream and first thing that popped up was this thing which is why math is important right so I thought I'd link up this and then what I thought we'll do is tackle some of the questions that came up if there's no specific questions that anybody needs if there's any specific questions that you guys have if you have an assignment or exam coming up and whatnot please let me know I'll take a little pause and or we'll just focus on what you need right and answer your questions and help you along right but if there aren't that many questions coming in we'll just start treating these live streams as taking a topic and just going with it all right so this is what I did today I was thinking about that question of why math is important so you know I, I'm gonna link up this and this is what I laid down because there were there were about three or four questions outstanding from the last math stream so let me show you what I did in point form I sort of just typed this up hopefully that's big enough for you guys to read okay there was one person that wanted me to explore the concept of functions uh, further or to explain the concept of functions okay so I made a little note for functions that's something we could expand on okay and for functions if anybody wants to I'm gonna move over a little bit because I'm gonna do a couple more pop-ups on the side of this thing um, for functions okay I put out a about a basically for the language of mathematics series 3a B like, yeah I guess 3a and B back in 2009 2007 I started making videos for how to graph polynomials how to graph quadratic functions and what the x-intercept means and all this jazz and if you've taken that stuff you might know what I'm talking about right you probably know what I'm talking about and I put out three videos regarding what you know defining what polynomial functions are right and this is the first video we put out so we're going to talk about polynomial functions a little bit right now or functions a little bit right now laying down the foundation connecting up the thoughts but if you want to explore the concept of functions more in terms of polynomials that's the video you want to take a look at and there's three videos to that it's video number 89 90 and 91 i believe and it's the language of mathematics understanding polynomials and defining terms and it's again i sort of have some visuals popping up talking about what polynomial functions are okay i'm just going to read another comment i think as a kid i would go i would I've got a lot more out of mathematics by actually applying it to things in the real world think think that's why I like physics and comp sci a bit more as a kid than pure math I 100% agree with you because they teach mathematics in terms of memorization and they really don't connect it up to things right which is why I laid down this sort of point form something that we can explore okay Chicho just made it to the stream at some point I'd like to talk about confidence intervals ah probability intervals relation to statistics and the bell curve um, confidence intervals I have to do some review on once you've talked about functions okay confidence intervals I'll have to do review on but I we could definitely talk about the bell curve and give you a little um, little overlay of what the normal distribution is if that's what you're interested in and if it is let me know once you've talked about finishing functions okay I'll let you know what I have sort of the train of thought that we could go off on okay and the first one of the first things was obviously functions and um, so that question will explore if you if the time allows let's not talk about stats please <laughs> stats is ridiculously important as far as I'm concerned statistics right now for our time and this point form thing that I've laid out covers that a little bit statistics right now is more important than calculus uh, in regards to the way our society functions in regards to our personal finances in regards to what we can the mathematics we can use in our daily lives and how we can 
take a look at use the perspective that math offers and take advantage of it right statistics is ridiculously important they just don't teach it properly okay just same way as calculus hello prof i'm not a prof thank you for the comment maybe it's the goatee that thinks you know uh, people could think that it might be a prof can we talk about integral calculus oh again i can't touch calculus right now i knew how to how to how to do it by heart but that was two years ago man i knew how to do it 20 years ago 25 years ago and uh, last time i touched calculus was probably 20 years ago actually no less than that because i taught in 10 years ago or so i helped out a few students some students anyway that were taking calculus very rudimentary basis okay thinking of doing calc one subject next semester what should i revise in preparation for beginning to learn general calculus you need to learn pre-calc and pre-calc is huge uh, most people that have problems with calculus is pre-calc that they don't know and that basically means math 11 and math 12 which is talking about functions how to graph functions find the x-intercepts and how to factor and what factoring means and stuff like that and we can definitely talk about that those things and i've created a lot of videos on those okay maybe they don't want to go in that direction yeah i just want wanted the basics i understand the basics are more important when going forward and exploring deeper into subject is that the uh that's the bell curve okay cool professor chicho have a ring to it though it does have a ring to it maybe someday we'll go for professorship or something like this right um as far as the functions goes we might touch on functions and i have touched on it before if you want a video look into the definition of polynomial functions for that video and then there was someone that asked me to talk about systems of equations okay solving systems of linear equations and i put out a video for asmr math solving a system of linear equations uh, with two equations and with three equations right if you want to go more than three equations you usually need linear algebra you need matrices determinants and stuff like this but we can definitely tag jump from functions to systems of linear equations right solving systems of equations basically right so the train of thought that i've had outlined we could start off with functions and look at systems of linear equations how to model certain systems right and what it means when we're solving them but if you want to have a sort of an understanding of how to solve system linear, linear equations with two variables and with three variables take a look at that asmr math video of how to study tip number i think it's tip number six uh, recognize the pattern remember uh, what does it say uh, recognize the pattern recognize the problem remember remember the pattern and I took a few different concepts for mathematics, and I believe the systems of linear equation starts off around the 20 minute mark. I have a table of contents at the beginning of the video that starts off with annotations you can click. So if you look at those, that section, it's a long video, it's an hour plus video, it will go through how to solve system linear equations with two variables and three variables, and that's definitely something we can kick into from functions very interesting your opinion on the current and future state of global economics for sure we're going to get into that okay and from that someone else uh i believe is cassidy i forget who the people that asked those questions are printed it out but we're free from reading the comments and stuff um, but i believe someone cassidy i believe asked if we could do a little bit of mathematics of horse racing because he was um going to go to the races the next day and place his best for the horse races and we had a little discussion on the previous math video and he gave me the outline of how the horse races work in the uk and he's in the uk and i'm in canada and i've gone to the horse races in canada and the us as well and just played around with a little bit just for fun right nothing serious um yeah <laughs> and uh we could definitely piggyback systems of linear equations into horse races right into basic to basically talking about systems and how we can model those systems and one video that we put out that 
is related to what we may talk about is this video we did for personal finance and it's about automation consider the implications on automation and it's sort of related to economics and it definitely links up to the question of horse racing and what the best way is to place your bets which you can kick kick into basically the fourth question that was asked on the last stream which has come up right now which is basically economics and the other video that we can link up to that and we've talked a little bit about this and I guess it's personal finance and it's talking about the different rates of growth for different systems in our current economic in our current society basically talking about Wall Street's automation politics economics and talking about functions and systems and linking everything back to functions right so that's sort of I I know it's a it's a pretty um, it takes your breath away when you think about it in the sense trying to link up why math is important it's starting off from function kicking up the systems of linear equations and using gambling horse racing as an example kicking that into Wall Street and politics economics and then kicking it back into functions but that's definitely something we can do okay if nothing serious comes up that we have to deal with right now we basically have to talk about the normal distribution statistics and we can definitely do that before we jump into this okay I rather watch you talk about math than go to the school for it any day <laughs> thanks thanks for the support brother I do love talking about mathematics so uh, it's something that I enjoy very much just step back to everything you've learned there and it's so enjoyable to think about for me yeah for me as well so let's change up the, the camera angle okay let me take down these videos and those are the videos you can look up if you want a little bit more info and as far as economics goes um, I highly recommend looking to the personal finance playlist um, trying to lay down a fair bit of into info and I've laid down a fair bit of info in the personal finance playlist um, and in the economics politics playlist in terms of what's really going on into the world and how mathematics plays out in this thing okay so let me remove these links okay and change up the angle to the video here every now and then I'm gonna have to sit down because uh, if you were watching the previous videos I've sort of twitched my back a little bit so uh, I'll try to last as long as I can uh, doing the mathematics right now um, I wrote a paper exploring the automation of the accounting profession last uh, semester awesome it was interesting to read about how automation artificial intelligence is changing the service uh, service industries and not I wonder why is the chat popping up oh my god I had the chat turned off my apologies everyone wow 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 people watching it on uh, BitChute or YouTube I was wondering why chat wasn't popping up um, in changing the service industries and not just the manufacturers that most people think of automation is going to change everything everything I don't think people really appreciate how important this is it's it's huge it's huge okay I hope your paper I hope you make your paper available online um, we don't even learn economics in high school or any sort of a finance no and whatever they teach is just garbage uh, AI will destroy them dead weight paper pushers um, it's gonna do a lot of things um, I don't think we're having true AI yet but we will definitely get uh, certain things happening so let me change the camera angle to this okay and I'm gonna take down this thing honestly so important yeah so let me take down uh, this thing my little point form thing that we have Boop. okay and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move the chat box over here okay to this side hopefully that's okay uh, I bet I have saved somewhere I'll I'll get it to you if you're interested oh for sure I'd love to uh, see what it's all about right 
uh, one automation if you haven't if you haven't read one automation it's uh, let me pop this up again the math thing uh, math important start shortly where did that go math important Doop. this guy uh, Martin Armstrong okay he wrote a paper and it's called uh, in the bottom where you see here let me do it here Oop, let me do it here uh, point see this thing here Armstrong behind the behind the curtain is a paper that Martin Armstrong wrote and it's called the full Monty behind the curtain and he wrote this back in um, I guess 10 years ago but it's about his experience in the 1980s and how he came up with one of the first algorithms to start doing automated AI um, trading on the stock market okay the US education system uh, is terrible honestly I've taught myself all I know yeah I love all AI and machine learning my job is safe if I can be good at it until they get robots programming robots then I've put myself out of a job I it's going to be a long time before that happens but a lot of other places are going to get nailed before that so before we get into this point form stuff let me let's talk about the normal distribution for now okay so basically and keep this in mind because this is sort of going to play out in what we're going to talk about as well and i have some stuff laid out here so hopefully i'm not going to bang around too much on things okay so the question regarding statistics was this and someone mentioned that they didn't want to talk about statistics and i mentioned that statistics is ridiculously important and by the way i'm going to try to create for all of these math streams try to create a table of contents in the description of the video right when it's loaded on bitshoot and youtube so hopefully there'll be uh you know table of contents if not the day of being loaded on the next day pointing to where certain discussions start okay mathematic functions were so much easier than sorting your whole life out <laughs> hello everyone hello Depp. hey Depp. um just a quick question okay was it you that when we did the philosophy um, and pancakes video was it you that asked me if there was if I had done any um, more any other videos regarding philosophy okay if it is because I was doing a fair bit of things I totally forgot that I had and we did two videos one of them was basically talking about a possible interpretation of the 100th monkey and another one was talking about how time travel played out in the arrival the movie arrival okay perfect it was you i remember correctly so if you do a little search on um, youtube if you do chicho 100th monkey a video is going to pop up that talks about sort of the 100th monkey experiment and sort of the way i've started interpreting interpreting it or one version i interpreted and the other one is looking at the mathematics behind the movie arrival and how time travel uh, could play out in that scene i don't know i can't remember if i've done any other ones but those are two that came to my mind okay now let's talk about um, i'm gonna switch up my pens here bring my pen thing here let's talk about beer face man so true <laughs> uh let's talk about um statistics really quickly okay just talk about sort of the fundamentals right the reason i say that statistics is more important than calculus right now for our lives going forward and it has been for the last since the internet kick, kicked in since big data kicked in okay because right now big data is everything okay metadata real data <laughs> data you you submit yourself data you're trying to you're trying to analyze data just pure data okay because computing power has kicked up we've been able to process more and more in intense data and by processing a lot of data and we're going to get into this during the when we talk about those point forms that you know we've laid out right but if we can process a lot of data then we can create models and based on mo those models we can make predictions right and we can either 
make plans for our personal lives or make plans for companies or make plans for countries cities we can make better decisions based on the data we've collected and based on any variables that we understand right so one thing we try to do with statistics is collect a lot of data analyze that data plot that data a lot of the times you take you take the data in and usually you're collecting tons of data right and you categorize those data into into different variables what you think is important about a system and then you try to find a correlation between the different variables and their outcomes or take a look at a certain variable and look at the distribution of that variable and see if that variable has a role to play in your decision making yes yes i was just about to say that the internet and data mining have thrown stats to the forefront yeah in a big way in a big way okay so basically statistics works this way when we're sitting there collecting lots of data okay one thing we need to do is take that data and interpret it right so one of the things we do is let's say we collect you know individual data for people based on their preference on anything right and if we graph that data that data could be of the form for example take a data take a data set right and let's say you've conducted a survey and you want to understand a certain system that you're analyzing right maybe you're a politician you want to know what people think maybe you're a business person you want to know what to invest in okay maybe you're running a company and you need to do hirings and firings maybe you need to change your business model right Cambridge Analytics might be oh my god <laughs> might be uh, an interesting conversation when it comes to data well let me pop up this little thing that I've set up here Doop. see this point form here that I laid out look into the bottom part here let me see if I can go into the right thing look into the economics and in the bottom part here we got Cambridge Analytics where it says wall street automation uh politics facebook cambridge and analytics okay so we might get into that but let me lay down the foundation of what the normal distribution is all about okay uh da -da -da -da. data correlation indeed the harvesting and usage of the data is important to understand 4 a.m. 4 30 a.m. the UK yeah you're the Christian there's someone else in the from the UK here as well um, they came on the stream at four o'clock so good morning to you good morning to you right now what we're gonna do is just do a little layout of the normal distribution right so let's say if we collect the tons of data and we're looking at something some kind of our axes could be seriously our axes could be anything based on the variables that we have you could have this as a percentage as a number that people like or and this one could be the number of people like it could be anything in the on the scales right but let's assume your data looks like this right let's assume you collect data and your data is scattered like this then what you can assume just on first glance is that your data there is no correlation between these right or if this is based on one variable one property of variable then you can say whatever you're looking at really is not relevant it doesn't have any effect to your model right i can relate math is without time math is without time <laughs> okay so that could be one model that you have another model you could have you could have heavy distribution in the front right and then slowly tapering off right? you're collecting data 
and you find out that whoever you're looking at, right? Let's say this is people, age group, right? If you have different categories, you could have here zero to 10 years old, 10 to 20 years old. Well, it would be zero and less than 10, 10 and less than 20, uh, 20 to less than 30 and so on and so forth. And over here, you could have, you know, if they like cartoons, right? Cartoons, right? Zero to 10 year olds are gonna like cartoons. Obviously, it's not gonna be zero to four, probably won't because maybe they don't know what cartoons are, but we're gonna assume even one year olds like cartoons, right? You could have a distribution like this, okay? So these things could be anything. I don't wanna really narrow our, our talk down to specific talk, specific, variables here right so let's assume we've modeled data and some kind of data fits this distribution what we've done in mathematics we have models systems that do follow this distribution and we've already run a lot of analysis on things that have this distribution and things that have this distribution have certain properties that we can analyze that we can talk about right that we can use to understand those systems whatever they might be whatever these things might be right so this would be one of them as you can guess there is tons of different types of data you could have you could have data where you know it goes down like this and comes up like this right points all over the place okay or you could shade it in or you could just have peaks just going there and distributing like this so you could have models like this that have two peaks extremes on either end right you could have models that are just straight up flat okay you could have tons of different systems and each one of those systems have certain properties that we can use to analyze that system now, one of the systems that occurs in the world that we've seen that a lot of systems in our lives fit the model to is something called the normal distribution. And it's look, once you plot it out, this is the way it looks, right? It looks like this. It looks like a bell curve, okay? Which basically says, if you're looking at people here right it says or anything i want to narrow it down to people if you look at this it says if you take the mean of all the data all of these are data points right this whole area down here then the mean of the data falls right in the middle of this and oh, i should have looked up my symbols that we use for the mean there's sample mean and population mean and let me give you a little definition of sample mean and population mean usually when you're doing statistics you're looking at a sample of a population population says you're looking at everybody that exists within that system okay sample means you've taken a sample of the data and you're looking at the sample of the data and that's what usually you're doing right i live in canada the population of canada is 330 not 330 is 33 million right anybody that wants to say understand canadians they're not going to go out there and do a survey ask the same question from three, 33 million canadians they're going to go out there and set up some kind of system some kind of survey system that is going to be a nice random distribution within the population if they want a random distribution within the population or they might narrow it down to a certain age group right then they're gonna ask a sample of the population right so they're not gonna go out there and ask 33 million Canadians what they think about something they're gonna go out there and ideally hopefully ask a thousand or more people you know the ideal i remember this we did this in university i think it was 1275 people it gives you a good representation of a population but the more the better right so let's assume they go out there they'll do a survey of 10,000 canadians and 10,000 canadians they'll look at its distribution 
and do the analysis on what the 10,000 Canadians replied based on the questionnaires they sent out, okay? And they'll extrapolate whatever information they get to the whole population, okay? So we're gonna look at the sample of a population, okay? There's a couple of comments, I'm just gonna read them. I think someone, uh, someone people get confused by the word system, but don't think of it in practical terms like a graph representing the supply and demand yeah for sure that's all it is systems in anything right sample methods are always important yeah sampling methods the way you set up your surveys that's one thing we should emphasize the integrity of the data the analysis that you put out for any statistical models that you've looked at right whenever you read any type of analysis based on any type of survey any type of um, uh, model that people have used to interpret a certain data set there's two very important things you have to ask yourself and this came into play when in geophysics when i did geophysics for a decade in the 90s right extremely important there's two weak links in the chain or two two of the most important links in the chain one of them is the way you collected the data okay so this the sampling um, survey okay who collected it was it random was it were there biases how they worded the question were there any problems with the survey the other one is the interpreter who's interpreting the data okay extremely important erection polls or glorified sample statistics and there's a lot of issues with uh, what do you call it election polls or exit polls when it comes to uh, that kind of data that mainstream media presents right so keep all of that in mind when we get into the analysis of the data we're assuming the data we've gotten is good data okay it's not garbage data and we're going to assume that the models that we're going to use to interpret this data are have solid foundations right they're going to be good models so we can read off some of the things okay let's talk not talk about the amount of people who fiddle with their p-values to make the results say that again and p-values is statistical uh very statistical parameters that you can set right so basically let's assume we've looked at that We've collected some data and we plot our data and our data fits this curve and we go oh fantastic the normal distribution is one of the systems one of the models that we know the most about we can make very accurate predictions for any system that has the normal distribution right and the normal distribution basically works like this it's a bell curve and it's symmetrical okay and the middle is called the mean and we're going to use x with a line on top of it to represent the mean okay so that's one very important uh, parameter that you get from the data set okay there's also mode but the mode for the normal distribution ends up being very accurate uh, close to the mean right the other thing we have with the normal distribution is how fast does it taper off because we don't necessarily have normal distribution like this. We could have a normal distribution that looks like this. Take a look. We could have a normal distribution that's narrower, that follows the same path, right? But it just happens to be no narrower, right? We could have another normal distribution that's wider. Let's assume goes like this, right? Yeah. That's a pretty crappy normal distribution, but let's assume it does that, right? We could have a normal distribution that goes, okay? So the normal distribution isn't exactly fitting like this. You can make it narrower or wider, right? And the mean would still be the mean for all these three different models that we have that follow the, or systems that we have that follow the normal distribution. Another property we have for the normal distribution is a standard deviation and standard deviation basically is a measure we use 
for normal distribution to say how accurate is our data within a certain distance away from the mean or how much of the population fits within a certain distance of the mean right so we take this data set let me erase these other ones so we don't get confused with this okay let me take out this guy as well the green guy and then we'll put back our blue line okay uh, this was blue Right. Here's our blue, and here's our black. Okay. So if this is the mean, and the data set, yes, keep going, Gio. <laughs> okay, cool. I will. So this is the mean, right? Let's assume our mean has a value of twenty. Okay. Twenty? What we don't know because we don't know what we're looking at. It's just a value of twenty. Let's say our standard deviation is four okay what that would mean and the standard deviation is um, ba -ba 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 -ba. oh man is that the population standard deviation or is that the sample standard deviation i can't remember um or it could be s for sample uh, apologies if i'm not getting the variables correctly i haven't taught stats for a while okay so let's assume this is our standard deviation standard or it could be standard deviation with this on top or is that the variance oh my god i forget what they are all right so let's call this the symbol no one's popping it up yet so i'm going to call this the standard deviation um this guy okay let's say our standard deviation is four if you get something with a model like this that follows a normal distribution and the mean is 20 if the standard deviation is four that means da, 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 because x and y aren't signed i understand chicho if only people in academia value truth over getting their papers published in journalism can't argue with that right so let's say the standard deviation is four what that means is if you go one standard deviation away from 20 this way and if you go one standard deviation away from 20 this way standard deviation is four so you're subtracting four from this so you're down to 16 here whatever the number represents and if you standard deviation is four if you go one standard deviation up from this then the standard de the number here would be 24 right and we went one this way and this would be negative one consider negative one and this would be one going this way to here right and if we draw a line here is that straight up i should draw this try to make it symmetrical okay so if we draw a line here let's hit it up on the same thing right because the normal distribution is symmetrical then if you go one standard deviation this way and one standard deviation this way if your mean was 20 and your standard deviation was 4 then you're at 16 if you subtract 4 and you're at 24 if you add 4 right and what you can do is go another standard deviation further away and this becomes 12 now right because you're subtracting 4 so you're two units away from there to here right so this is two negative two from there to there and you can go two over here right and this should be about the same length so this would be if you go another four this is 28 right i hope that's clear so you've gone positive two this way two standard deviation and because our standard deviation is four that means if you go two standard deviations away you're at 28 if you go three standard deviations away you're at 32 if you go four standard deviations away you're at uh 36 and stuff right so if your standard deviation is four then every time you move one additional standard deviation away from the mean you've moved four units okay what does this mean well this is one way you could start using it for us what we know is this if you have a normal distribution okay and it has to fit this bell curve right then if you go one unit away from the mean 
one standard deviation away from the mean, irrelevant of what these numbers are, right? This could be 200, standard deviation might be 40, and this would be 160, this would be 240, right? If you go one standard deviation away, then the area under this graph, the amount of data, and the area under the whole graph is one and stuff like this, but we won't get into that yet. But if you go one standard deviation away this way and one standard deviation away this way, you basically sandwich the mean with one standard deviation on this side, then this area contains, correct me if I'm wrong, 68.3% of the data, I think. People get too hung up. Negative one or one doesn't matter in the end. Or did I forget everything? Well, the negative one, I'm sort of implying that's the Z number as well. I'm sort of connecting it up with the Z number because these numbers here, to again one thing we've mentioned is mathematicians are lazy so they try to standardize everything so because the numbers here change up between models whatever system you're looking at there's an infinite number of systems that follow the normal distribution right the system we've drawn right now has a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 4 another system might follow the normal distribution and the mean might be another number and the standard deviation would be another number, right? So what mathematicians do, they don't try to look at the absolute numbers for each system. They try to standardize all the systems, all the systems that follow the normal distribution into one type of analysis. So what they do, they say, if you move one standard deviation away from the mean, whatever the standard deviation is, we're just gonna call that the Z number. And the Z number is basically the jumps in the standard deviation. So this would be Z number of one, okay, or negative one, I believe. And this would be here, would be negative two. This would be one, positive one, because you're going up. This would be two, positive two, if you're going up. Hopefully, I'm, the negatives, I, again, I haven't looked at it for a while, right? Uh, people get, da, 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 da. let me re just read a couple more comments. The people might be correcting me uh, when we're doing this. This comes up a lot with IQ. People get hung up. Yeah, ba, 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 ba. when it comes to uh, is German, 68.2%. Sweet, thank you very much. CP, CP, 62.8%. Uh, 60, sorry, 68.2%. Okay, so if you go, if you sandwich the mean, one Z number on either side, if you go one standard deviation away from the mean for a normal distribution, irrelevant of what the absolute numbers are, then 68.2% of the data fits within one standard deviation away from the mean. So if you had, let's say 10,000 people surveyed in Canada, okay, yeah, gonna be X squared, so it doesn't matter. Oh, that's right, the standard deviation is X squared or square root of X squared, once you're, Loss, just enjoy the relaxing voice. This is also looser pants on YouTube. If you remember, I don't remember, I don't know what that means. But uh, so, if you have, let's say, you sample 10,000 Canadians, right? Ten, or yeah, 10,000 Canadians, right? And one standard deviation away from the mean contains 68 percent of the data then six thousand six thousand eight hundred forget point two percent six thousand eight hundred people within your sample size are within the number 20 so six thousand eight six thousand eight hundred people uh, Canadians that you surveyed out of the ten thousand are between 16 and 24 okay whatever the 16 and 24 represent okay um, I hope that's clear and what you can do with this data now is you can if this data was corrected uh, collected 
accurately if you have trust in the data in the model and you have trust in your interpretation then you can take this and extrapolate this into the population all of canada and do the same type of percentages for all of canada and so instead of saying that out of 10,000 6,800 6, people are one standard deviation away from 20 you could say out of 33 million canadians 68 percent of those canadians fit between 16 and 24 whatever that 16 and 24 represent okay and there's different formulas the z number i forget uh, hopefully this pops up i think the z number is uh, the mean the number the value the data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation you take the square root i forget what the formula is okay that's the reason i don't want to delve too deep into statistics we will at some point i'm going to create a whole series on statistics but we need to cover certain other things before we totally delve into statistics and i like to make sure the gaps are filled i hope this is okay this was a good intro for you uh just talking about the mean normal distribution standard deviation and what you can do is put uh, confidence intervals on these and look look to see how many people you don't have to look to see how many people are within this area you could say hey you want to find out how many people i mean one thing that people will appreciate they do this in school they used to do this in my school when i was going to high school teachers would used to force the students to fit the normal distribution right so if everybody aced the exam the teachers would run models and distribute people according to the normal distribution then they would say oh the average should be 73 percent here let's put this with green they would say make the average 73 percent right irrelevant of what people got on the test and then they would run a model and distribute people along the normal distribution and they would give the normal distribution a certain width if it's going up fast or not right so if everybody if they wrote the test or raw data said the average was 90 percent some teacher would say no that's too high we're going to force it to be 73 percent we're going to make the standard deviation let's say five percent and fit everyone based in this model which i think is ridiculous right so there's different places where you can use this model which for some people is a legit way to use it for certain other people it's not a legit way to use it okay i hope that's uh, that's a good little intro to the normal distribution it's f i love probability i love probability my professor grade our courses along the distribution curve oh i can't believe they graded along the distribution in the university they do it crazy crazy uh, up here i have my standard whiteboard the markings you'll need to do this math with me are titanium white <laughs> black okay so let's um because nothing else has come up that people need uh help with right now let's talk about oh look at the red i forgot i wasn't supposed to use the red it's leaving too much residue behind making our graph red or our board whiteboard is that okay ah, that's okay okay so if there's no other major ah, let me drink a little bit of tea too major questions that people have let's pop this up let's answer some of the questions that were left unanswered from the previous live stream and let's talk about this someone asked if i could explain functions more uh, accurately just delve into them a little bit right so i made sort of points here and i'm going to go through this semi rapidly because i do want to connect things up okay so i think only two units in the uk grade on the curve and that's oxford and cambridge i believe oh oxford and cambridge the whole university grades on a curve crazy crazy okay 
So let's do this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move the chat to the other side again. That way it pops up that we can read it just in case I pop this up. Uh, what we're going to talk about, okay? Just because they want people to compete for their grades. Yeah, they're old school. Right now it's about collaboration, not about competition, okay? So what we're going to talk about in functions is this. Dependent and independent, cause and effect, and variables and systems. And we're going to cover this pretty rapidly, okay? Let me turn this off. Where is it? So basically, just like the statistics we talked about, what we do, one of the things we use mathematics for is we look at a certain system we want to take a look at. And again, systems are anything, right? It could be, it could be anything. It could be you being a skateboarder, you wanting to do an ollie over a curb, okay? It could be you being a business person, you want to invest money into a corporation. It could be you being a politician, you want to run for office. It could be anything. It could be anything, right? So let's assume we want to take a look at a system and understand it. What we do in mathematics is we assign variables, basically letters from the English language or Greek language symbols or whatever it is, to things that vary within that system, right? So for example, time is one thing that varies, right? So time usually is defined as T, okay? That's one variable, letter that we use for a variable, and T usually represents time. Big T represents period. X and Y are usually used for unknowns w is used a lot z is used a lot okay so there's a whole bunch of letters that we use in mathematics to mean things right so let's assume we have a system that is a very simple system let's say we have a system that has two variables one of us one of them is independent the other one is dependent and what that means is one of the variables is dependent on the other variable okay and usually time is an independent variable so let's call t our independent variable and let's call um what should we call uh let's call x our dependent variable okay so we could come up with some kind of equation some kind of system where x is dependent on t, whatever x might be. How big fruit get from spring to fall, right? They get bigger and bigger. The size of the fruit gets bigger and bigger as time progresses, right? In a season, in a growing season. It, like seriously, my, my ability to come up with examples right now is limited, but it could be any type of system, right? And what we could do is we could represent this as a function in function notation. And what we do is we write it like this. We say X is dependent on T, okay? And this is one notation, it's one thing. It's called function notation. Or you could just say X is equal to some kind of relationship with the t let's say the function is this 2t plus 5 right this would be the same 2t plus 5 so x varies is equal to 2 times the time plus 5 right now because we're going about this and we're going to use general things we're not going to use um, time and erosion time and erosion would be fantastic let's do this i like time and erosion thank you time and erosion let's call erosion biggie okay biggie right so erosion of something is twice the time whatever the time frame is if you're measuring it in years seconds minutes hours days weeks months doesn't make a difference plus five right 
Where did we come up with this model? We just made it up, right? Does this represent anything real? I don't think so. We're just using an example, right? When well, I'm falling asleep and I have work in the morning, but thanks for the math, Chicho. Have a great night. Sweet dreams, fast car. Sweet dreams. Thanks for popping by. So here is one system that we have, and this is a function, and this is what's called a linear function. And we usually write it in this notation. As you progress in mathematics, you start using function notation because what you can do is appreciate that erosion is dependent on time, right? There could be situations, and there are situations, where your function, your dependent variable, because your erosion is dependent on time, right? How much something erodes is dependent on how long it's been exposed to the weather, right? How long it's been human beings, how long we've lived, our bodies get beaten up, right? They deteriorate over time, right? So erosion is dependent on time, okay? But erosion is dependent on many other things as well. So this function only has two variables, erosion dependent on time, but erosion could also be dependent on time and use, right? If you abuse your body, if you use your body a lot, it'll break down, right? Gymnastics um, is one place, uh, all the gymnasts in the Olympics, they look amazing doing their tumbles and doing all the stuff and whatnot. But from what I understand, they're, you know, their bodies are taking a pounding, right? When they're doing all those tumbles and jumping and falling. So from what I understand, gymnasts, as they get older, they start having a lot more aches and pains than those people who haven't done gymnastics, right? So for a system that is more in depth than this system here that we're looking at, over here, we're considering erosion to be only dependent on time. In this system, we would say erosion is dependent on time and usage, right? And the function could, for this could be something else, t plus five divided by u, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, right? I'm just coming up with just terms, an equation, a function, right? That's what functions are. They're basically taking one variable and relating it to other variables okay and one or two of the variables could be independent another one the erosion is dependent on these variables and you can switch these things around as well on different types of functions and as you can guess each one of these variables has a range a domain they have limits right for example human beings when we age we start from year zero and we go to the last year that we're alive right in korean so for example whatever your age is if you live in the western world your age started at zero and when you were born a year you're at one years old i believe in korea when you're born they consider that to be one so that data varies depending on how you're setting up your model right but each one of these variables will have some kind of you know sandwich between two different numbers of how much how long they're going to be in existence or what acceptable values are for them okay so functions over here creating water and access your body really does take a beating you end up with a lot more problems later on yeah for gymnastics but if we take a look at this thing dependent on independent variable cause and effect and what this thing does and then variables and systems so let's talk about cause and effect and what does this do if we come up with equations talking about functions for us to visualize these things we usually end up putting these things on a graph and take a looking at take take we take a look at these things and we analyze these things we run some models and try to under that understand these things and do predictions based on these things right and these things that i point out here da -da 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 -da, where are we this guy here cause and effect and so what we try to do we try to figure out what causes faster erosion what causes if we're talking about this 
what causes slower erosion when it comes to human beings there's a tremendous amount of money and research going into trying to prevent aging right and this has been going on for centuries right now the technology has gone to a level where we're taking a look at dna breaking things down we're messing around with dna and starting to bind different properties from different dna's we're doing um what i call it franken something and gmos we're growing plants that are resistant to certain types of you know i th i believe we have tomatoes right now that are resistant to frost right they don't because frost is something that really destroys tomatoes um, if you've ever done gardening so they're growing tomatoes right now that are more resilient more resistant to frost right so we're messing around, messing around with some of these variables and extending their lives and changing them based on the models that we've had right so we're taking a look at these things and looking at the cause and effect of these things okay so that's what really sort of you know just a broad stroke of what functions are functions are us looking at systems and taking a look at different variables and trying to decide what's important what's not and how these things are related and what we do obviously we graph them right that's a polynomial function we whoa, look at something that's an asymptotic function we look at things that are curves right in statistics specifically right so functions come into play in all different fields all different disciplines and it's basically us trying to understand how a system works okay why are you guys trolling hmm. so we got to kill somebody not kill somebody but ban somebody sorry no killing people let's see if we can ban somebody creating slows my aging down a lot so let's see i'm gonna do a quick bang guys sorry about this do we have any mods here auto mod messages being held oh okay so auto mod is kicked in but i'm just gonna ban someone here sorry buddy hopefully i got my commands right oh gee i gotta put on my glasses here okay oh gee fire haze is now banned sorry og fire haze dude really not the time or place chicho is too pure for this hateful garbage go away was that the only person that needed a little banning <laughs> what silly silliness silly silliness you guys are weirdos but this is interesting stuff anyway um if anybody if people are trolling stuff please let me know yeah you got him okay sweet and at some point we're definitely you know if anybody wants to be a mod let me know i'll do uh, i'll assign you a mod i know it's a lot of responsibility uh, i'm surprised people would even troll on channel like this i don't know people they get a kick out of things right they need a little attention don't say sorry i fell out the dude's board on a friday night yeah yeah there's got to be a little bit of sympathy there right so that's basically functions in a broad stroke just to introduce the terminology right because we're not going to look at specific functions right now since now the questions have come up but basically what we can do another question what happened i just got back spencer hi spencer i just had to ban somebody they were trolling a little bit do you do programming I, i've taken programming at university but back in the day man we we're using pascal and fortran it was horrendous okay so i didn't and i used uh something else as well i can't remember it wasn't very good so i didn't really get into programming too much i would be sorry but i'm a little drunk and enjoying some 420 math awesome awesome <laughs> good stuff i don't know good math a mod nice okay so let's take a look at this thing hold on let me pop this up again uh where are we 
collecting analysis. So someone else asked a question before about solving systems of linear equations, right? So let me touch on that. Evening, Chicho. 1.20 a.m. here in Montreal. Ah, good evening, brother. Canadian Montreal. I, I lived uh, in Montreal uh, for a few months, a couple of months, two or three months, and I've tra traveled Montreal a lot. Love Montreal. Amazing nightlife. Amazing nightlife. Um, but there was someone that asked about if we could talk about solving systems of linear equations. Never learn uh, good how to calculus. So take a look at this thing. Da -da 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 -da. Systems of. If you want to know a little bit more about systems of equations, systems of lin solving systems of linear equations, take a look at this video that I have up, which is basically, you know, steady tip about. Um, recognizing the pattern because basically solving equations you basically learn a certain way to solve certain types of problems and now as long as you know how to lay out the problem everything just sort of automatically works out it's basically an algorithm right so that video there will help you out and the section we talk about systems of equations is like 22 minutes in or something like that English would be a good subject to conquer for <laughs> <laughs> funny. Uh, so let's talk about systems of linear equations and that one for sure look into because what I want to do I'm going to cover this very quickly as well I want to get down into the example and the economics aspect of these things okay so basically systems of linear equations is this let's assume we've understand what functions are so we've looked at uh, a system where there are two variables right and in mathematics the way it works is if we have one equation we only need one variable uh, if we have one variable we only need one equation to solve it right so for example if we have this 2x plus 5 is equal to 7 that's one equation it has one variable and we can solve this right move the 5 over minus 5 minus 5 so 2x is equal to 2 divide by 2 divide by 2 so x is equal to 1 that's our answer that what x is about me uh, English ju, ju, ju. Never learned, but you know, uh, okay if the conversation gets a little too intense let me know um, so that's one equation with one variable right let's assume we had a system where we have two different variables and the two variables we're going to use we're going to go back to the variables we use generally in mathematics which is y and x right so let's assume we had we looked at a system and we found some kind of relationship between the two variables which was y is equal to 2x plus 5 right we looked at a system and we came up with this relationship y is equal to 2 times the x plus 5 5 more than twice the x so y is equal to 5 more than twice the x right and this basically would graph something for us right it's a line and what we could do is graph that line y intercept is 5 1 2 3 4 5 slope is 2 1 2 over 1 here's this line it's a function okay is the 12. what if we looked at the system and we found that there was two types of relationship we had for x and y what if we had this as well negative 5x plus 2 okay let's assume we looked at a system and we had another function that related the x and the y as well right then what we can do because we have two variables we have two equations we can solve this right in mathematics if you have one variable you need one equation to solve it in mathematics if you have two variables you need two equations to solve it in mathematics if you have three variables you need three equations so on and so forth right now because we have two equations relating giving us a relationship between our two variables we can solve this equation and the way we can solve it is you can just look at uh, if you want to go further down this just look at 
this video here right how to study tip number six and there's a table of contents there and it takes you to systems of linear equations solving systems of linear equations would be this, this be the same if lines crossed more than once can simultaneous equations help with that or not yeah this would be for example these are two straight lines that would cross so let's draw this just to give you a visual of this right y intercept is five one two three four five slope two over one that was our first equation right our second equation y intercept is two negative five over one one two three four five over one right here's our second line and the solution to this system of equations is right here okay whatever that point is the x would be let's say negative one and the y would be one two three four four point two right negative one and four point two satisfies both this equation and this equation right clean up screen overlays oh clean up screen thank you very much <laughs> Whoop. clean up screen clean up screen mm, where is it here uh, there it is thank you very much uh, Ryan thank you clean up screen overlays overlapping the math right so if we have graphed the first equation we'll graph the second equation we find their intersection and what this means is if we plug in x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 4.2 this equation is true and if we plug in y is x is equal to negative 1 we get y is equal to 4.2 we don't we haven't solved this i don't know if those are the values right but if you want to know how to solve this look at that video right we could do it fairly quick right now if you want do you guys want us to solve this let's do let's solve this i'm going to solve this by elimination elimination basically means i'm going to subtract one equation from another the other equation and get rid of one of the variables because what you're trying to do is eliminate variables get down to one variable then you have one equation with one variable and you can solve it right so what i'm going to do i'm going to subtract this equation from this equation and what that's going to do is if i'm going to go this minus this i'm just going to change the signs for these variables for these terms and add because i don't like subtracting that are, are you familiar with recursion yeah it's something i've been struggling with in programming yeah sorry off topic uh it's not off topic it is related but uh, i would have to refresh myself i've used different types of uh i i think recursion is sort of uh, different types of analysis for different types of models where you can come up with certain types of functions to represent your models right it's like regression or something protein versus carb versus calories over a long time can i use this um protein versus carb versus calories over a long time um possible <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'll have to look into it uh christian Martin. so if you had a curve function crossing a line more than once would you find both intersections using some yeah you could for sure I'll, I'll we'll do one as well okay so over here if i subtract one from this y plus negative y this kills that it becomes zero on this side 2x plus 5x is 7x 5 minus 2 is plus 3 and then bring this guy over that's negative 3 is equal to 7x divide by 7 divide by 7 so x is equal to negative 3 over 7. if we take this number now x is equal to negative 3 over 7 plug it into for x here and plug it into for x here we're going to get the same y out okay so for example if you do it for the first one equation one y is equal to 2 negative 3 over 7 plus 5 this is going to be negative 6 over 7 plus 5 hopefully you're seeing this yeah then common denominator is 7 that becomes negative 6 that's over 1 7 times that is 35 so we get 29 over 7 that's our y we can confirm that by plugging in negative 3 over 7 into this one right and that's one thing you should do let me erase this kill these guys right we plugged it into the first equation let's plug it into the second equation 
negative 3 over 7. y is equal to negative 5 times negative 3 over 7 plus 2. All right? Into the original equation. Remember, these are what I changed the signs to, right? We're not going to switch it into the change sign version. Problem plus y carbs plus x. Protein plus y carbs plus x. Yeah. yeah. You could give variables to any of your things you want to talk about if we're talking about food and fitness for sure at some point again we're going to get into that stuff but you can assign different variables for different variables different letters for different variables right so this would be five times negative three is going to be 15 over seven plus two common denominator is seven so that becomes that's over one that becomes 15 plus 14 which is 29 over seven we got the same y out right so the solution to this system of equations with two variables two equations is negative 3 over 7 and 29 over 7 okay I hope that that's okay solving a system of linear equation with two lines right what we can do as well what if we didn't have two lines what if we had y is equal to this and y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6 okay this one is a quadratic so if we graph the original equation the line is 5 1 2 3 4 5 and then up to over 1 that's our line there that's equation 1 this guy the x-intercepts for this are negative 2 and negative 1 we've gone through completing the square that you can use to graph this thing okay but basically the y-intercept for this is negative 2 and negative 1 a negative 2 and negative 3 let's assume it's here negative 2 and negative 3 it's not because it will be more over here but this is good enough for us then our graph goes like this right and the solution to this system would be this point and this point because it crosses it twice okay and we've done a little bit of this uh, for ASMR math, finding the solution to these things, right? I don't want to go into the specific of the specifics of solving this, but again, this was two variables, y and an x, y and an x, and the x has squared and single, but it's still just two variables, so all we need is two equations to solve it, okay? Got to catch some rest. Okay, CP, tomorrow... I'm taking a test to see where um, I'll be able to continue my graduate studies. Oh, wow. Thanks for covering some basic stats. I'll catch the rest on YouTube. Okay, sweet. Glad, uh, glad I could help a little bit at least. Good luck in the test tomorrow. Okay. So as you can guess, if we have two variables, all we need is two equations. Now, what if we had three variables? What if we had this plus... 5z plus 6 right z plus 6 and negative 5x plus 2z minus 7 and our third equation would be x plus z minus 1 right to solve a system of equations with three variables you need three equations and we have three equations and again in that video the ASMR math tip number six to recognize the pattern <laughs> what should I call it <laughs> I gotta look at it <laughs> systems we called it recognize the problem remember the pattern right so the way this works is if you're solving a system of linear equations with three variables you basically combine two of these things with another two on the side. You eliminate one variable. You create equations that have two variables combined. Those guys solve for one variable and then back substitute in, right? And in that video, basically the pattern of solving this, the algorithm of solving this, let's assume these are our three equations that we have. What you would do is take two of these equations bring them here okay 
do a little bit of calculation, get rid of one of the variables, and you end up with a smaller equation with two variables. And then you would take, let's say, those two equations that have three variables, you do the same thing, and you eliminate the same variable that you eliminated here and create another equation with two variables, but with the same variables. If this had y, x, and z, then let's assume in both of these we decided to eliminate the z. In here, we would have a variable with x and y. Here, we would have a variable with x and y, right? I wish I found your stream a couple of days ago. I needed help with math, guys, for my math this morning. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm going to do this on a regular basis. So if you need help, uh, keep an eye out. We're going to do a lot more math because math is really um, one of the things that I really want to focus on, right? So basically the way it would work is we took three equations with three variables, combined two and two, right? Got rid of the same variable. Now we have two equations with two variables and we go back to the previous system. We're going to combine these guys, right? These two equations, eliminate one of the variables. Let's say we eliminate the X and we solve for the Y. We get an answer for Y, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to back substitute in here into this equation, the same way we did previously, and solve for the X, right? We do a little bit of calculation, solve for the X. We're going to do the same thing here just to confirm just the same way we did previously, right? So this number should be the same as this number if we did our calculation for y correctly. Now that we have a y and an x, what would we do? We'd back substitute in one of the original equations or into all three of them to check, but you wouldn't really have to do all three. You would do one and maybe another one just to confirm. We'd back substitute into one of these guys, right? Both the x and the y and Right, and then we would solve for the z. We do a little calculation. We solve for the z, and we found our solutions to this system. Okay. That the Chicho, Chicho has a bunch of great videos online that you could um, watch. Yeah, for sure. I have a ton of videos online. Uh, well, there's going to be a lot more, but there's some videos online that you can use uh, if you need a little math help. And if you don't know where to start, let me know and I'll try to direct you. Uh, da -da -da -da. So let's, let me pop this thing up again, the math questions, right? So that's basically systems of equations. And what you do, collecting and analyzing data, variable, creating models. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, collecting and analyzing data. It's actually a good thing. So I'm changing. Hey, Max, how you doing? You were doing a stream earlier. I couldn't catch it. I was prepping for this. Uh, I hope it went well. I hope it went well, right? So basically, these are two paths to one result. Math, I love. Chicho has no sub alert. Um, math streams. I don't know what sub alert is. Oh, I do have sub alert, I think. I think I made it available. Do I? I don't know. I got an alert box. I don't know what that does. Still navigating myself through <laughs> through Twitch. Um, but basically, we looked at a system with two equation, two variables. We looked at a system with three variables. Now, kicking this back into the statistics, right? What we started off with. The whole thing with statistics was we're going to look at a system, collect data, right? Analyze that data and try to understand the system better, possibly by creating models, right? So if you take a look at this, the second point that we have whoop, here, right? Solving system linear equations, collecting, analyzing data. Collecting, analyzing data basically comes up when we're collecting the data, specifically it comes up in statistics a lot, right? And then what we do when we have these types of systems, and by the way, when we have four or more variables, we get into something which is called, we're using determinants and matrices to solve those kinds of problems because it makes it more automatic. As you can tell, two solving system of equations with two variables is a lot easier than three variables. Four variables 
it becomes more complicated. So there's been algorithms, automatic methods set up to be able to do those, right? And they're really fun and we will get into them at some point. Someone subbed tonight, but wasn't sure if you caught it to say thanks. Oh, I didn't catch it. Uh, if you, whoever subbed, if you're still here, thank you very much for subbing. Uh, I'm trying to read the, the comments and uh, things popping up and there was a little bit of troll action happening. So I was trying to deal with that. So thank you very much for subbing. Uh, I've slowly started to realize what's going on when alerts are popping up or little, uh, what are they called? Twitch bits, Twitch tokens, Twitch somethings, those little jewels that pop up. So thank you for those uh, that pop up as well. Uh, I've seen them pop up in previous streams. I wasn't sure what was going on, right? But basically, these are the type of uh, systems that we have, right? This is three variables. So as you can guess, in the real world, systems have way more variables happening than just three variables, right? Things that we're trying to analyze. So we need linear algebra determinants and matrices to do those types of calculations. And once we start doing those types of calculations, what we can do is we can come up with models that we can sort of use to analyze that system, right? So let me pop up the next thing that came up in the last stream, which was by, um, by Cassidy, I believe, where he mentioned that he was going to the horse races and he was going to bet, do some certain types of betting systems on horses. And he wanted to know what the best approach to that would be, right? Mm -hmm. So let me read you. I want to read you this thing, his comment. Uh, just a small section of it, right? Because it was interesting. It was a little different than I will mod, mod if need be. Okay, Christian, I'm gonna I'm gonna set you up as mod, brother, um, because it does throw me off when there's troll action happening, and I need to take care of those things. Mod C S T martin Doop. you have added martin as a moderator of this channel sweet thank you very much uh tick. let me put this up again okay so basically the comment was this uh, da, 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 da. initially he put up a <laughs> he put up a comment it was it was interesting that the way the horse betting worked in uh in the uk is a little different than the way it works in canada united states the ones i've been to anyway um but he was basically stating that different bookies offer different types of uh, odds on different types of bets right and here is pretty standard it goes sweet the little green things beside your name martin so um you're there thank you very much um uh, uh, for taking on the responsibility and if you step out that's fine man I, I don't think the troll action is too much there's previously on one of the first live streams I did I didn't realize we needed mods and all the stuff happening so it was just chaos a, a sword to slay them <laughs> trolls <laughs> oh, oh that's what the sword is for a stores to slay the trays I couldn't understand what the symbol was trying to represent all right so um Casey basically uh, gave me a scenario of different types of betting systems. So we had a little chat, but he gave me his uh, the options of how to place bets. And he told me some of the bets that he had placed, right? So let me write, write you this betting that he did. And I didn't understand what one of the symbols was, right? So the bet was this. It was Telford. I guess this was the race. And the bet was one pound for EW at four to one. And then he had an EW bet three places, places at one to five. Okay. And I read that and I couldn't understand what, what he was, 
what the EW represented. Because in Canada, we have bets that we make. Uh, you either win, place, or show. Win, the horse wins the race, right? So if there was a bunch of horses, I, I can't even draw a horse, but here's my horse, right? So if there's a whole bunch of horses racing, right? Whoop. Let's draw four horses. Someone has to come in last, <laughs> right? In in Canada, United States, the way I've placed it, you can bet on someone winning, which means they have to win. You can sell, bet on a horse placing, place, which means they can come in first or second, okay? And this is first, or you can bet on them showing, which means they can come in first, second, or third, right? You cover all three possible, all three possible situations, right? I'm not busy much at the moment either. Could mod. Um, on Paddy, I don't recognize your name. Christian Martin's been around for a while. I think one mod uh, should be sufficient. Um, I have written down in the past. <laughs> Let me show you this. Uh, I've written down in the past some of the names of people that have hung around, uh, that have been on the stream, and I don't recognize your name. And from what I understand, um, you shouldn't be handing out mods to anyone that asks because problems can arise. So apologies if I'm saying no right now, but I think one mod uh, should be good for now. Five to one is my lucky. Twenty-five to one is my lucky bet on a horse for sure. Clean this. Oh, clean the screen. Clean the screen. Clean the screen. My apologies. Clean the screen. Clean the screen. Thank you for that. Um, sorts. So basically, that's the way the betting goes in my area, right? So after after Casey posted his betting stuff, he asked me what I thought about it, and I sort of replied in the following sense. That's the way I look at it, blah, 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 blah. Um, so here's the bet. He, 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 this was my comment, right? The only thing I used to focus on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as for your bets, for example, you place one pound on a, on a race at four to one odds. So four to one basically says for your $1 bet, you get $4 back plus your original bet, right? So basically what happens is if you pet $1 on a horse to, to win, right? And the horse wins, let's say we bet $1 on this horse to win, right? $1 or one pound. I'm just going to use dollars because the dollar symbol is easier for me to do than the pound. I'm used to that, right? And this horse is paying for a win at four to one and the horse goes along and wins. Then for your $1 bet, you get $4 plus your $1 bet, right? So you get $5 total back. But one thing I mentioned to him was this. Uh, back. What I don't understand is what the EW stands for and what does the three places one to five mean? I didn't understand what EW was in three places one to five. Okay. And this was his reply. So the EW signifies that it's an each way bet as each way bet is actually like two bets in one sticking with tell for this one okay as an example i was betting one pound right that the horse would win but each way means i'm also betting one pound that the horse will place near the top and that's what each way means placing near the top so this bet was actually two two dollars or two pounds one dollar for a win and one dollar placing in the top three which is sort of show in canada two years chicho i love horses and fast track dogs <laughs> nice i've never bet on dogs i love to bet on dogs um i would actually actually would like to go back and bet on some horses i did a little bit of it just for fun right so better i'm also betting that the horse will place near the top the each way rules changes from bookie to bookie and that's brilliant right and the race to race 
but in this case the payout was for the first three finishers and one to five means that the odds are odds are one fifth of the odds for the winning okay so let me erase these parts this and let's talk about what this means okay so the one to four means four to one right one dollar bet gets you five okay ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. odds for winning so one dollar each way bet is actually a two dollar bet with different win conditions so if telford right had placed first then the bookie would pay pay out four to one on my first pound and then pay out four to five on my second pound okay so the way it works if you want to figure out what your return is going to be for a horse they take this ratio and multiply it by this ratio so four over one times one over five the one just kills the one so it's four over five that's what you see, what your return is for a horse if you also if the horse places in the top positions in the first three places okay so you get a four to five return on that bet and you get a one to four return on a win right so he continues Da -da -da -da. so if therefore had placed first then the bookie would pay out four to one on my first first pound and then pay out four to five on my second pound but if the horse had come in second or third i lose one pound on the first payout and four to five and i i would get paid out four four over five odds on the second or the third place right so if the horse didn't win the only payout would be this right if the force had won the payout would be four to one and uh, so four to one and four to five right so you get double payout but the second payout is less because you covered more spots right so this continued a little bit and then the conversation kicked up a little right because he kept on saying that uh, let me read this part too because Casey sort of triggered something for me that's why I linked it up to this right I've been choosing my horses on a number of factors and number of factors basically means variables for us right and connect this back up to systems of equations when we're looking at any type of system model and we're trying to understand that model trying to understand that system to optimize it for us right so i've been choosing my horses on a number of factors the odds are a good sign uh good sign up for what the odds are a good sign up from uh, front but then i like to have a look at how long since the last race and how often the race if they've changed trainers or been on a on a break if they had um, wind surgery recently i also like to look at the top speed and racing post ratings and stuff like this and this continues right so basically what's going on in this conversation is we're looking at the odds the odds are basically ratios if you take if you place your bets on something that's harder for the horse to do then the odds are a higher payout if you try to cover your bets and sort of take insurance which was mentioned where as long as the horse places in the top three which is easier for it to do than to win then the payout is less right and the way you can place the bets on the horses is look at the statistics because horse racing is just a stats game just like most sports a lot of sports they're stats games when it comes to betting on them or trying to figure out which team is going to win which team you might want to support right so what you can do with horse racing is look at a whole bunch of different variables who the jockey is when the horse last raced if they had surgery what their top speed is if this if that and some of the other things that casey pointed out right i think talking about the stats in texas hold'em or poker stream would be awesome oh, i will at some point for sure we're gonna hit up poker and this is my reply to casey right taking out a horse race looking at the ratios and start taking a look at different variables right 
what's going on with the force who's the jockey how old is the horse right how many races has the horse been in how many races has the horse won right so my reply was this that would be awesome to dig deep like you looking at the frequency of races surgery or whatnot with computing power at present you could treat everything as a variable and start assigning a power or a scale to each and see what the algorithm spits out then fine-tune and do it again until you find a model you can live with oh my as for the EW blah, 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 and then we go into that right so basically my comment was if you're able to quantify all the different variables then what you can do is come up with a model right and people do this come up with a model that you're comfortable with that is tried and true you've tried it out a lot in a lot of different races in a lot of different conditions in a lot of different places and it gives you a good prediction of who or which horse is going to win or possibly place in the top three and you would just place your bets that way and if your model is pretty good then you can make pretty mint money right have a pretty good return coming in that's mathematics that's what kicks into the functions aspect of things right so just imagine let me read a couple more comments or posts as wow i read i finally caught you live keep on the great work <laughs> thanks to thanks tony i gotta uh, taking off the glasses putting them back on makes the eyes go go uh, i think one of the greatest aspects about math is that it can be relaxing in one moment and frustrating in the next but once everything connects it's super satisfying that it is that it is so let me pop this up right so when it came to the example that's the example that you can think about Ooh, let's go over here in this thing with horse racing right you can take a look at different horse races and spend some time figure out which variables right you put weight on which variables are important is it the age of the horse is it the jockey is it how many races they've been in in the past is there a frequency of number of races that would you know make sure that the horse is not tired but well trained right so they're not burnt out to do this race they've rested enough to be able to do this race to win this race so you can look at all of these different variables and come up with your own equations let me put this here because i don't want to take that down yet you can come up with a whole bunch of different equations right and start collecting data and take a look at this thing and see what type of model it can fit using statistics right and start taking a look at your mean what your mean return rate could be with your bets what the standard deviation could be you could start messing around the variables with the equations right and there are people that do this there are people who have come up with systems to game some kind of systems right which is basically create the models check this out create the model and repeat so you would take the information right run a few tests a lot of tests and optimize your model and if you're seeing the amount of money you're putting into races or investing into companies or putting into a stock market the return is going to be more than what you've put in and you're getting that on a consistent basis then what you can say is your model is pretty good and what you can do is start fine-tuning your model based on your variables and try to increase your rate of return right and that's exactly what's going on here and once you come up with this kind of model what you can do is just kick it into automation right midway and weight of horse midway and weight of horse i don't know what midway is i guess midway one thing with horses that i've noticed is i used to do is do they burn out halfway do they have a leg to last through the race or not and their weight for sure would be it i have to say it would cost a pretty penny to make informative system like this uh, 
weight of ours okay the for sure it would cost a pretty penny but the return rate would be phenomenal right and I'm gonna give you an example where this has worked before right so once you come up with this kind of model you could try some automated betting just run the algorithms through a computer and let the computer decide what to bet on you make no more decisions you're just entering in the data and you can place your bets and if you're getting good returns then stick with that model or fine-tune that model and get it better and better right and this is where that paper from Armstrong okay Martin Armstrong behind the full Monty right um, what's it called behind the full Monty um, oh sorry behind the curtain the full Monty it's something we discussed with in this video okay when we did personal finance what we talked about is how automation could possibly change our society and it is changing our society right and the full Monty Martin Armstrong's uh, paper was about how he looked at the stock market Wall Street because this is what this is right horse races Wall Street business if you're starting a company if you're messing around with your physique ath athletics athletes do this a lot athletes have some kind of food regimen right they have dietitians if you're talking about professional they have dietitians that collect data from them their weight their muscle mass their fat content their cardio their how they're doing with weights in the gym and all that jazz they collect all that information and they try to balance their dietary intake to try to optimize their strength or their speed or their endurance or their stamina or whatever it might be right so these types of analyses using functions looking at variables dependent independent variables coming up with equations and seeing how all these variables are connected and running models right they're not limited to horse races or wall street or business they're related to athletics they're related to every aspect of our lives right hello Zach hello so what you can do is once you find a model that you're happy with you can just run an algorithm and let the algorithm place your bets for you right if that's available which is what Martin Armstrong in this video that we talked about was trying to emphasize that how automation was going to change the face of Wall Street which is what we're seeing right now because the majority of the trades done on Wall Street right now are automated trades they're all done on based on algorithms and different clearing houses have different uh, hedge funds different companies different types of investors have different algorithms that they're running to place their bets on Wall Street to buy some kind of into the markets right and this really kicks us into economics right there because what's going on with economics with Wall Street right now automation has taken hold computing power has allowed investors companies corporations to take any type of systems they're looking at start messing around with the variables and give the variables certain type of weight and start fine-tuning their variables and start testing their models to see what they can do with their models to see if they can increase their rate of return right and we talked about one of these funds right in oops not that one in this video right we took a look at the rate of return and this is again personal finance and this was let me put on my glasses I don't know if I can read that without my glasses uh, yeah we basically took a look at uh, different types of things you could have invested in right and again that was in personal finance and what we did we took a look at the CPI we took a look at the rate of return for gold the S&P uh, jobs land we took a look at the rate of return for comic books a certain type of asset you could have invested in with I took comic books because I know comic books we took a look at cryptocurrencies and we took a look at 
one fund, one of the fund that had blew away any other fund during the period that it was investing, right? That the fund was open, right? Because right now, if you invest in any type of ETF or any, anything like this, um, basically a great return would be a 7% return. You're doing phenomenal. 5% you're doing good. What you're trying to do is beat, beat the rate of, rate of inflation, which you know most central banks set it up two percent or something like this right two or three percent but if you're just hitting that that means your money is just breaking even right because inflation is burning away your funds so you really have to be above that right and we talked a little bit about this with differential accumulation and capitalist power and whatnot right but what you can do is increase your rate of return the higher up you can go from rate of inflation the better you are right so if you're getting like seven percent rate of return you're doing phenomenal if you're pushing getting towards ten percent you're going astronomical right on a yearly basis if you look at this the wall street automation let me take down this video so that video we dig into it a fair bit so if you're into it you know have a watch through that video let me take that down let me read a couple of comments that popped up when people talk about global warming, they go nuts because they think it's a risk. When Bill Gates says we're not prepared to fight a global scale super germ outbreak, no one cares. I wouldn't take anything Bill Gates, I would take everything Bill Gates says with a huge grain of salt personally. I don't have very much respect for the person in terms of um, if he cares about humanity really that's my personal take uh, i don't want to burn any bridges or anything but i'll have to watch the upload of this uh, later we have such terrible internet here and i'm getting none of this through the lag oh my apologies hopefully well it'll be up on bit shooter youtube uh, later on tonight okay uh, but basically hey chicho any update on when the stream will be tomorrow will be tomorrow yes tomorrow's stream the comic book hall stream uh yesterday we're doing a cooking stream and we had a comic book delivery and since we got the comic book delivery we're going to do the comic book hall stream tomorrow at 10 p.m my time okay so 10 p.m pacific time comic book hall and it's modern age comics comics bought from the same collector that was his selling off his collection and we got like 280 comics to look at okay hopefully that answers your question but basically what's happened uh, bah, 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 bah. automation uh, wall streets um, I want to make sure I'm not um, kicking off yeah we're doing so if you're getting 10% you're doing phenomenal now let's take a look at this thing okay Facebook Google Twitter and a lot of these major platforms that have come on the scene okay they're about big data and what happened with facebook recently it came out that they're selling your data obviously they told from day one facebook twitter google all of these platforms that are collecting all this huge amount of data right huge amount of data remember if we have a ton of data for any system we can create models to either manipulate that system make predictions for that system fine tune our model to take advantage of the of that system of the sort of the uh, flaws in that system right so if you're collecting a lot of data which a lot of these platforms are then you have a tremendous power right so what's happened recently with facebook they've it came out that they've been selling their data to a company called cambridge analytics okay and cambridge analytics what they've been doing is taking all of this data right treating it the way you would as a mathematician analyzing this data taking out what some of the important variables they believe are the variables that are in play in 
this data set right creating different types of models and manipulating uh, using that data using their models to manipulate people's behavior people's thoughts what they've been doing is fixing elections around the globe right now this doesn't relate necessarily to the Facebook data them selling the data they've been manipulating elections around the globe without collecting the data from Facebook they've been going into different countries and collecting data from whatever platforms it could have from whatever country it could be from Facebook as well but they're doing different types of things they've been setting up politicians they've been uh, blackmailing politicians they've been fixing elections right so it came out that Facebook has sold 50 million or 60 million users data to Cambridge Analytics and Cambridge Analytics has been using that data or use that data to interfere with the 2016 US elections because what they did they took all that data ran their models figured out what the important variables were and then they created content to distribute on the platforms such as Facebook Twitter Google YouTube whatever it might be so they took data from these platforms analyzed it created a model that suited their desires their purpose and they created content to distribute on these same platforms to manipulate the people that are on these platforms right with the full knowledge of the platforms right which is why Facebook is in deep poop right? is in trouble right now for saying yes we sold our data to these people but they're saying we didn't know that these people were doing this thing right which is not the most accurate thing statement that i've ever heard okay i put my hope in strong medicine though i'm not a fan of the man oh this is bill gates again understand how damaging the super germ yeah for sure there there is issues with that we might take a look at that stuff too right so that's what cambridge analytics has been doing right now who is cambridge analytics this is going to kick back into what we've been talking about regarding investing functions and stuff like this and it already has connected up like we're down here but we're talking about collecting data and kicking things up to functions coming up with systems and equations running models optimizing your models and using the information you have the models that you have that you're comfortable with to game the system right well it's come out that the cambridge analytics people the people that funded Cambridge are saying, by the way, they're a UK company, right? Interfering with US elections in a huge way with help from data collected from a US corporation, right? With the knowledge of a US corporation using the platform for US corporations to disseminate misinformation or information based on their models. Well, Cambridge Analytics, the backers of Cambridge Analytics are the same people that ran renaissance technologies okay now who is renaissance technologies renaissance technologies hello wilson hello wilson welcome to another stream uh, thanks for popping by we needed you a little earlier um, so we, we got another mod going as well but there was a little bit of action that i had to ban somebody uh, there's another comment here from riot let me read that for a second i would argue they are uh responsible for their users data but how would they get any more than what the cr credit company had happened uh had happened to them recently with their huge leak yeah there is see there's metadata there too the people moving the the amount of data it's insane if you guys are into it we'll dig into some of this data and link up some of the stuff and what you can do with some of this data i've looked into it a little bit it is uh frightening and beautiful at the same time right 
But going back to Cambridge and oh no, yeah, I know the trolls are crazy. I think I'll be very hard in the future to control what people do with the data after it has been purchased. Um, yeah, you can't do anything if you sell data, people can do whatever they want with the data, right? Chicha took him out. <laughs> There's no accounting for corporate corporations. So take a look at this thing, right? The backers of Cambridge Analytics. The backers of the Cambridge Analytics are the same people, same money that ran Renaissance Technologies. And that's who we talked about in that video that I put up, right? Where we took a look at a fund that over a 20 year period in Wall Street from 1994 to 2014, I believe, okay? Now keep this in mind, rate of information, target rate for most central governments in the Western world is anywhere between two to 3%. If you're getting a return rate of 7% on Wall Street, you're doing phenomenal. 5% you're doing good, 7% you're doing phenomenal, 10% you're kicking ass, right? Renaissance Technologies, oops, Renaissance. So I'm gonna take down the video, right? Because I wanna do little pointers. So if you want more information on that fund, from Renaissance Technologies, take a look at that video that was in a personal finance section, right? The backers of Cambridge Analytics that took Facebook data from 50 million users, analyzed them, created their own models, made up functions, looked at them as different types of systems, right? Took that information, analyzed that information and created propaganda to suit their own purposes. The people in Cambridge Analytics they had the backing of Renaissance Technologies. The owners of Cambridge Analytics, the people who basically funding it, are the same people at Renaissance Technologies. And the people at Renaissance Technologies over a 20 year period on Wall Street by using automation, right? They did the same thing that Martin Armstrong talked about in the 1980s, but they did it in the 1990s right they took data analyzed it made up your own mo their own models and automated their investing right or their market play right so they have computer ai if you want to call but it's not really ai it's just algorithms making decisions for them in a 20-year period on average on a yearly average return they had 71 percent per year for 20-year period unbelievable right that is the power of mathematics that is the power of functions because once you start analyzing functions analyzing systems and representing the functions looking at the variables if you start fine-tuning your models right as someone mentioned it'd be a lot of work to try to take all the variables in a horse race that the outcome of a horse race is dependent on the weight of the horse the you know if they're good at rainy climates their weight their uh how many races they've rest, if they had it they ran how many how much sir take all of those variables and come up with a model for horse races just imagine what you could do if you could take all of the data all right and come up with a model automated model to place bets on wall street what your return rate could be well now we know renaissance technologies the same people that were the backers of cambridge analytics that took Facebook data, data from American citizens, manipulate and analyze that data and influence the 2016 elections, they came up with models that gave them a 71% yearly return for 20 years. That is the power of mathematics. That is the power of being able to create models for systems and what they can do for you right and the people the the people at renaissance technologies they were one of the main backers of the trump campaign as well as a major backer for the hilly so they were they put their money into both horses in a two-horse race because whoever came into power right they would be indebted to the people who were running renaissance technologies right and who are the people who started Renaissance Technologies? I'll give you one guess. They're mathematicians. 
there were a bunch of mathematicians that realized automation was going to take over and one of the first places they realized automation was going to take take over computing power was going to take over was wall street so they got together mathematicians they created models they put their money into these models right they had faith in the models they created they got a 71 percent return on a yearly basis for 20 years and then they got into politics which is really economics and we've talked about about this you know inverted totalitarian uh system that we live in where economics trumps politics all business decisions are based on economics not politics what not human rights or anything like this but what your rate of return is what your accumulation of power is right which is absolutely amazing which kicks us all back up to function and it becomes a loop and you can do this thing for any type of system you want to talk about right and this is sort of uh, what i wanted to sort of introduce and answer questions or sort of bring in my big brush and just going back to one of the original things that came up which was someone asking a question why is math important in that video i sort of went off saying why math is important and in this stream we sort of talked about how math is important in a big way because right now with big data we have the possibility of analyzing a tremendous amount of data and influencing almost every system within our society right and we have to be aware of that uh, and what that implies and how that's being played that and how that's playing out and what's really behind all of this right and behind all of this for good or bad for good or ill is mathematics and people who understand what they can do with data right there's a bunch of comments that popped up i'd like to have a read through those <laughs> illuminati uh facebook experienced the banks one of the things with facebook i just recently watched something where one of the former executives of facebook came out and actually said he actually stated this that there are basically 150 people that control the world right and none of those people the 150 people are the people that we know that are the tech giants or any of these people like zuckerberg and all bill gates and all these people those 150 people are behind the scenes and they do whatever they want in the world and they create or destroy any systems in the world and this facebook executive i take everything they say with a grain of salt and his deal was that he wanted to become one of these people why not him he kept on saying why not me why not him to make decisions that influence affect the entire globe right my thing for that as soon as i heard that my response to that would be i don't want to be part of the 150 people that control the world i want to be part of the billions of people that live in the world that we can easily create our own systems as long as we understand how the mathematics plays out so we don't have to put the power or give the power to 150 people to decide for the world what we should do we should have us deciding what we should do ourselves right and we can do that with big data we can do that with technology there is no stopping mathematics mathematics is just a tool and any tool could be used for good or ill and i think the more people which is why we're doing these live streams the more people appreciate the power of mathematics and this is the power of mathematics then um we can uh obtain liberty in large degree right call it call it a night night whispers thanks for the stream chicho i'll be here for the comic opening tomorrow awesome man looking forward to to the comic book hall as well hey have uh, have a computer now that can pick horse races horse weight times horse height <laughs> oh really that would be cool 
the obvious formula used to pick the winner. That is, that'll be a good for great formula. Maybe someday I'll uh, I'll try to come up with my own. Did you teach me linear algebra in 2013? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I think I might have done some linear algebra back then. I can't remember. Uh, people say systems all the time. They just hate. I gotta put on my glasses for this. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna disappear off the screen. Actually, let's change the camera angle. Let me put it here. Boop. Where are we? Boop. Nice. That way I can read. Da, 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 da. They just hate the people that play the game better than them. Yeah, to in large part because people don't understand that. Um, that's just a comment. Uh, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people have a huge hate on for people who use um who use the system to their advantage right who use tax shelters and uh take money offshore and do this and do that but that's part of the system one of the things that i heard um someone say higher up in canada anyway as far as politicians go was paul martin and paul martin was one of the finance ministers in canada and he became the prime minister for a bit and he had a shipping company and his shipping company was registered outside of canada hopefully my memory is serving me serving me well but he had a shipping his shipping company was registered outside of canada so he didn't have to pay as many taxes and in an interview you know uh, someone asked him you know did he think this was the right thing to do to dodge taxes in canada by registering his company overseas right and his reply was that is the system that is the that is what we have available for us in the system to be able to use the system right so in the western world from my experience um, the system the economic political system that was set up here was set up for people to form corporations to act as corporations within this economic system that way they can have a lot of write-offs they're not held liable liable accountable for what their corporations do um, it, it's it's a crazy system i don't agree with it but that is what it is right now until we change it right so as the comment says people have a lot of hate on for uh, they just hate the people that play the game better than do they than them which is 100 percent accurate is this live why is my algebra teacher ignoring me <laughs> I don't know hopefully hopefully I am your I did teach you linear algebra back in 2013 maybe whether I do I do have videos up but I can't remember all the videos that I've done I think the hardest thing for me riots uh, says I think the hardest thing for me is translating real-world situations into mathematical equations I mean I can understand if I'm driving 60 miles per hour to Chicago and it's 180 miles away I'm going to probably take three hours to get there, but the analytics involved in the Cal California stuff is crazy. I agree with you. And a lot of these models that have come up that people have, these equations that we have, they're not absolutes. Like Newton's laws, they're not laws, they're approximations. <laughs> okay? Like Newton's laws, when they came up with them in physics, they weren't laws. He just collected a lot of data and came up with approximations of what these equations could be right so that comes back to the data set that we talked about right well, how functions can play out how automation plays out right now with big data we can collect a tremendous amount of data about almost any type of system that we want and we can run algorithms to simulate 20 years of experimentation with this data and you know the algorithms will pop up models and then we can use these models to run experiments so what's going on right now with anime with uh with modeling with automation is it's it's a game changer it's huge uh i hope i hope that's becoming clearer and clearer uh, da -da 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 -da. mathematics is just like a language it 100 percent is translating real world uh, problems into math is a skill 
you develop 24 7 just by writing reading and translating i agree with that very much you would end up with a very narrow view of how things should be run if you're only basing it off of blah, 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 percent of the population ideas 100 percent, i agree and people's interpretation uh, you know what they give weight to a lot of the economics that we have right now is garbage because they haven't they've dismissed some of the most important variables that we should be accounting for such as pollution health water resources topsoil like all of that is not is not a variable in most economic equations so all of those variables have to change all of those formulas have to change mathematics is the language of the world of the universe charlie is that you <laughs> i thought you were going to teach me derivatives of inverse trig functions oh my god derivatives of inverse trig functions uh, yeah it's just a high probability this will happen same as trying to count cards in blackjack there are people who can count cards in blackjack that's why uh, when i was going to vegas i'll give you a little lowdown on on how automation is changing things and how technology is changing things and our processing power is changing things when i was i started going to vegas really young facial hair went a long ways back in the 80s if you had a mustache you could play in vegas right so the first time i went to vegas by myself i was like 17 18 years old i was able to get a room and play the tables play the games insane i don't know if you could do that now right and back then you could play blackjack tables that had one deck two deck right one deck was hard to find you could play two deck blackjack tables right and then they kicked it up to four decks and then slowly over the years they introduced automatic shuffling okay and then they kicked it up to six decks and then they introduced automatic shuffling and then right now i i don't usually go and i haven't gone for a while they have constant shuffling and the reason they did this is was because people were able to count cars with one deck with two deck and even six decks people were counting cards right so they had to introduce uh technology to be able to prevent people from counting cards and there are people right now that are banned from playing casinos because they're too good they're too good right do you feel that there is uh okay is counting cards illegal counting cards um they they'll just ban you right just nothing's illegal if you don't admit to it right so if you're being charged with counting cards just say you're not counting cards no you're not counting cards uh, that's my understanding of it anyway but don't take anything i say as legal advice please uh, no but casinos will kick you out for doing it they'll kick you out and if you come back again they'll break your legs or even worse okay do you feel that there is a lasting ways to curb private power uh, from the bottom up or would it have to be done from a vanguard party with aim to seize the state apparatus i don't think you can change the system within the system from within the system i think uh, we're way past that um, i think what has to happen right now is there's all kinds of systems that are collapsing 100 percent there are a lot of systems that are collapsing based on because of technology automation information data analysis mathematics computing power right there's a lot of systems that are collapsing but there's a lot of disruptive innovation that's coming up right so i think what needs to happen is new systems have to pop up to compensate for what's collapsing and these systems have to be independent from the systems that were in control before right to a certain degree education is one of them right and, and and a few other things which is one of the reasons that i'm doing this right it's not about just preventing uh control from systems that have been around for hundreds of years you have to create alternate systems right you have to create models that are whatever you want them to be right i'm not going to try to dictate uh, what you should shoot for uh, da -da 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 -da. we're selling out our future for the 150s needs now pretty much man fusion will mess up the power market 
solar power wind power renewables are having a huge effect um, fusion 100 percent. i hope one day we reach it uh, we're on i used i've read a little bit about this uh, from what i understand it's possible i don't know why it's not being implemented uh, i think it takes too much energy for it to uh, be sustained uh, i think there is there are good arguments for capitalism but personally anecdotal evidence uh -huh. moderate socialism could make strong arguments for western economics um my personal take regarding socialism capitalism and all those isms uh they they all have baggage associated with them i don't think we've ever seen true capitalism i don't think we've ever seen true socialism um i don't think we've ever seen any true isms because uh everything's is has been corrupted uh, so I, I don't I don't follow any of the major isms uh, that are that are popping up okay uh, that are around what up hey cozy someone just subbed I lost it oh, I was reading tip tip 62 thank you for the follow uh, uh, now that would be a real shake-up free pretty much unlimited energy with no waste and that is the key our economics the driving factor is energy if we can control energy if we can have unlimited energy renewable energy our whole economic system will look completely different than it does right now because everything's based on energy right da -da -da -da. i was able to count three deck but nope. couldn't get any higher uh, your eyes sure seem like they were counting the cards we have evidence on camera one of the things with counting cards just so you know um, the way they know you're counting cards is not if you're winning but based on the fluctuation of your bet because if you're counting cards one of the simplest way to count cards is the plus and but that's really just understanding probability one minus one of winning and yeah there, there's one kind of counting system where you get positive one negative one uh two tens and, and numbers and stuff like this we can talk about this later if you want but you can count cards right so when you're counting cards if the deck has flipped over to a situation where it's more profitable the odds of you winning is higher then you can increase your bet so that's what the casinos look for what they do is they look to see how you're fluctuating your bet and if they notice that you're fluctuating your bet based on some kind of possible counting system that you're using they're going to grab you by the scuff and escort you out right so if you're always betting one chip whatever that denomination might be one chip every time on your game they don't care about you they're that's not a winning game right but if you're betting one one and then all of a sudden kicking it up to 15 right and maintaining that for a couple of rounds of the odds if you think the odds are for you to win if you're counting cards and then once you win a couple you kick it down to one unit again and ride another wave until the odds turn in your favor again and then kick it up again they're going to keep a really close eye on you are you a trump train um i don't follow any of the political puppet trains the cronies what's up dude doing well pimple face pansy sniffer my hobbies are australian economics ah australian economics you must follow ron paul do you believe i like ron paul a lot i like ron paul a lot not everything he says but i like a lot of things he says do you believe in the afterlife please, please explain um i don't believe the material this is all there is mathematics physics tells us this is not all there is the mass of the universe that we have accounted for that we can interact with is only five percent of the mass of the universe which mathematics tells us there is which physics tells us there is 95 percent of the rest of the mass of the universe that according to our math according to our models is uh, uh is not accounted for right 
so what is that other 95 percent is it just this i don't know uh, but i'm i'm happy with not knowing uh, i don't think we're gonna know everything uh, do you believe in afterlife let's hope one of those disruptive innovations isn't armed drones for the 150 this is ah i agree with you um unfortunately there are a lot a lot of useful idiots that are okay working for the 150 that are the decision makers right and a lot of those useful idiots are the ones that are trying to get into those, those positions um, i have faith that mathematics will solve our problems because there's a lot of brilliant brilliant people out there that are mathematicians physicists programmers chemists biologists that are working outside the system and i think if anything reaches critical mass then there's going to be algorithms <laughs> being set in motion to take things down that's my understanding of things uh, austrian economic riot just subscribe with twitch prime thank you very much for the sub riot i see the little things popping up i'm starting to starting to get used to this twitch uh all the things popping up uh let's hope one of those yep australian econ is real fun there are a lot of interesting topics regarding those economics regarding the rich person's paradise i agree with you australian economics and a lot of different economic theories are very interesting uh, message is being held for review allow we'll post it to the chat crooked hillary is a pus um pus i forget what pus stands for i'm gonna look this up before i allow that uh woody woodpecker pus pus open oh i know what pus is it's a piece of <laughs> it's a piece I agree with you, but I'm gonna keep this is pretty chill, brother. Uh, Woody Woodpecker 2020. If you can phrase that in a different way, uh, I'll definitely uh, uh, allow it for sure. I rather live in a capitalist country than a socialist one. Uh, I don't. I don't know of any capitalist countries. Uh, pure capitalist. The United States is not capitalist. This crony capitalism is best inverted totalitarianism, really. I rather in a, I rather live in a homogeneous country. Ha! Good luck with that. There's always a conflict with multiculturalism. What's up, man? You look like a good man. Uh, I don't know if I'm a good man. I try to be. Uh, I try to be best as I can. Another sub, Chicho. Yeah, another sub. <laughs> this time I caught it and I said thank you. Uh, hey, hey. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I like casinos with with in-person dealers rather than digital. Oh, for sure, psych major, because I can read dealers and their intentions, so it makes it a bit easier, 100%. There's one other thing you can do in a casino on a roulette table. You can follow the, the dealer on the roulette table when they start spinning their... Um, spinning the ball around. It's It's super fun. I've done it before. But if they catch you, oof, 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 and they catch the dealer playing, working with you, you're both in trouble. The other 95% theoretically is dark energy, but that's a lot of weight unaccounted for within the 5% material. 100% dark energy and dark, uh, dark matter and dark energy. Most of it dark energy. Okay. Pimple face pen, panty sniff is now following. Hello, pimple face panty sniff. Uh, I bet five pounds death is just like sleep you don't feel or acknowledge your own existence you do have dreams uh, don't dismiss the dream world uh, us is a kind of an oligarchy to say the least 100 percent, i agree with you uh, yeah crony capitalism are the best but don't let americans hear that i think a lot of americans know that i think a lot of canadians know that as well uh, a lot of people i know here uh, there are still a, a huge percentage that believe that uh, the system cannot be gamed 
uh, it's all fair and square. They don't appreciate all the loopholes that have been put into place by by corporations that have written these laws into, into place, right? Um, so we could definitely pick a certain topic and go down that. We lost control of our country completely with the changing of funding laws and allowing anonymous money streams into Canada, 100%. And uh, super, I forget what they're called, super something. There's, there's so many issues with our current systems. It's insane. Uh, no, they don't. Most of the West know. They argue Republican versus Democrat. Hopefully that argument is changing slowly. Uh, Republican versus Democrat is... <laughs> is it's 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 a non-argument it's it's nothing no system will ever be foolproof or perfect super packs super packs i like that chat super packs yeah that's what it's called i looked into this stuff a lot uh when i was writing back in the 2000s um when it became obvious in 2008 that the class was going to happen or the scam i call it the biggest theft in human history the 2008 financial class and i wrote a lot about it a couple of years uh, two years building up to it um, i know a lot of people saved a lot of money saved themselves a lot of headaches saved their families um, by reading some of my stuff but as soon as no one was held accountable i realized that was uh, i had to take a different approach which is what we're doing now what we're doing now right sharing information most other streamers try avoiding any political discussion i call this economic discussion this isn't really politics economics rules politics right now as um, i've mentioned this before i'll keep on mentioning it chris hedges rephrasing sheldon walden calling this place calling it inverted totalitarianism and this is basically what we talked about this with this right this uh what i laid out here is basically talking about economics politics different types of system our society starting off from functions what variables are and looking at systems when we started this off with statistics right kick it into solving systems of equations and using an example and bringing automation and then kicking it into wall street and giving you guys solid examples of how this data collection looking at models is playing out with different companies and how they're affecting our societies by putting into place cronies that will do their bidding so they can collect more data and create better functions to continue this whole cycle right where will this break uh, i think it's breaking right now i think they're losing power to a certain degree i think the power is being distributed through technology no it's literally not an argument but people still have it and don't realize both teams are uh, against us yeah that's the republican democrat i was a bernie sanders fan but it's very hard to get a candidate like him in you know what uh, i like bernie sanders but uh i'm sorry uh he uh when he gave his support to hillary he basically told everyone to bugger off maybe they promised them something but he should have held steadfast and said no right that's my opinion he sold a farm uh he took a payout he took a promise he took a promise from people that break promises right uh he should have known better yeah the day socialist ruled the u.s uh, have you seen the movie the big short yeah for sure i like that movie uh it's about the financial class but also entertaining yeah I, I liked it i liked a lot of things about it i didn't like it that um, they didn't point the finger towards the parties that were responsible and they didn't point out that years before people had predicted what was happening uh, mathematicians specifically is the day the u.s no longer exists they prefer orange old man orange old man oh orange old man talking about trump <laughs> that's funny one of the one of the things with political affiliation is the difference between economical political affiliation versus social political affiliation yeah i agree with that so a bunch of 
people make these really weak correlations anecdotal relations rather than causation with them and one thing that people do they one thing that you notice with mainstream media or with anything that's happening in, in economics or politics or whatnot you see the the pundits come on tv and they tell people why a certain thing is happening for example the stock market is taking a serious downturn right now right and then people come out and say oh it's taking a serious downturn because of this right or because of this most of the time they're they don't know what they're talking about they just they've been told what to say everything that's happening in our current econ economy is not based on one variable there are multiple variables in play right they say oh facebook has taken a tumble because they sold their data to uh, something analytics that's based on this based on this based on this um it's also a bubble <laughs> right it's also it's also a lot of fake data that they have that they're telling they have this many users and they don't and this and that it's it's also people uh have are done with the novelty aspect of some of the social media now they're looking for better content right there's a lot of things going on so the variables are very important what the the gatekeepers try to do is they try to say that all of this right right all of the functions we look at oops all of the functions we look at are based on one variable but they're not they're not linear they're not quadratic there are multivariate functions right so there are a lot of variables at play that require systems to be analyzed for models to be put into place to be taken advantage of certain types of systems right that's my two cents on it anyway um, oh, I'm missing some uh, stuff coming up also 7 a.m. in the UK are we at 7 a.m. in the UK we're at midnight almost midnight in Vancouver time up 22 hours at 22 hours might as well go to 24 <laughs> Christian Martin 22 is a lot a lot of hours to be awake brother uh, I hope you're gonna get sleep uh, hopefully you can get some good sleep during the day right I wish he would uh, have said no but he looked like a broken man but he did look like a broken man I don't know what they had on him but based on all the data being collected from everyone there's a lot of politicians that have been are in they're controlled right so who knows what they had on him Hillier was just a venomous as a snake as Trump 100% agree 100% agree um, incredible from 300 300 million plus people in the United States those are the two candidates that were selected to represent the United States the United States would have, would do better uh, by having a lottery system for every position in the US government from the president all the way down to the secretary to the to Congress to every Western country would do better by pulling a lottery out of all the citizens in that country to fill the positions that are required to fill okay that's my take thoughts on Warren Elizabeth Warren no uh, she's she's done some good but on some of the most crucial things that really influence I'm not sure why I went into politics we're doing mathematics but it's all related one of the most crucial things that uh, she is wrong on is foreign policy and foreign policy is extremely important and she's lacking there uh, and until foreign policy is fixed for every country in the world um, things will not approve very much my vote is for <laughs> mathematics. I don't know I don't consider myself a mathematician I just know enough mathematics to do what I need to do okay yeah most people rely on anecdotal individual person versus actual statistically significant data which filters out of a lot of people's minds I agree well what happened with the last election cycle is that both Republicans and Democrats got to see the under underpinning of the rig teams agreed and how yeah agreed on that people 
this election was absolutely amazing because all of a sudden the curtain was lifted and people went what <laughs> and that to me was absolutely amazing and how regardless who the people wanted there were there were others being pushed up against the will of the people yeah and i'm curious to see how that's going to play out in the coming years and i think that's sort of playing out right now one thing that people don't appreciate and uh, that's sort of gone by the wayside is uh, a lot of people say occupy wall street die down occupy wall street didn't die down obama's president presidency with hillary clinton it wasn't obama it was hillary and obama together right uh that administration that regime took down occupy wall street in one go right and they came out and said oh we didn't or orchestrate it they took it down in one go so it disappeared from the streets and it went underground and right now what we're seeing with a lot of disruptive innovation is is the people who knew what all that was about creating new types of systems giving people an option to participate in different types of system create different models and that is going to change our society in a huge way and i think it's already changing our society in a huge way in a huge way um but, but, uh, how regardless i can't think of you again uh snicker hype what does that say try hard that played out uh play out is where the u.s goes time to move to canada you guys legalize we right well we'll see how that plays out i think you live in canada i, I do live in canada um west coast and i I've, I've been here i used to travel a lot and i haven't traveled for a very long time and one reason i haven't traveled for a very long time i haven't left bc west coast canada since 2002 and i told myself i wouldn't travel anywhere where i had less rights than i do here okay Tada, i think trudeau has great hair hockey hair trudeau is just pure cringe uh, trudeau is not his father uh, okay justin trudeau is just pure cringe great hair though i can't talk our pm looks like darth <laughs> I agree with you on the idea of the bad foreign policy with Elizabeth Warren even though I was a supporter of Obama in that they both had weak foreign policy but something that should be reinforced is foreign policy increasing educational funding weak yeah yeah Oof, that was a lot of conversation that popped up after we finished a little bit of mathematics thank you very much guys I was trying to Hopefully I didn't miss too many uh, major stuff, but uh, thanks for being here. Fun stream. So we've been going on this for three hours now. Wow, wow, wow. That was fun, lost track of time. Um, so I think we're gonna call this, if I didn't think Putin was a pure villain before I do now, by the way. Uh, Putin is Putin cheers chicho great stream man thank you thank you zen uh can warren's foreign policy be explained why is it bad uh hope my mod was okay your mod was fantastic christian thank you very much martin um awesome and who was the other mod i, I lost track of who the other mod was uh, so both of you guys modding thank you very much um the troll sort of threw me off at the beginning a little bit it was a little chaotic the flow wasn't as sweet with the function section. Uh, my apologies for that. Um, usually I'm good at multitasking, but I I do want to make things. Mod was awesome, dude. Yeah, it was. I do try to uh, make things as pleasant as possible in any platforms that I'm that I'm creating content on, and that's that was sort of my attention. Uh, so thank you very much for the for the modding. Cheers. <laughs> uh okay uh chicho the troll slayer <laughs> at one point i was a mathematics man myself but it's been a while since i've taken classes love to join the stream while it lasted hope you all have a great night thanks chicho hope to see you make another cliff diving video soon i will be i will be 
I need to make one. I don't cliff dive myself, but your passion about cliff diving is awesome. I will be. That's three, two, three videos that are going to be the first videos I do when I get back into full editing um, because I'm taking an editing, full on editing break right now. Um, but I'm going to be doing those. And those are, I got five videos lined up that I need to do that I've made promises on. And two of them are the cliff diving one. We're going to do some physics and mathematics and I've had it all laid out. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Have a great night, buddy. Have a great night as well. 7 a.m. and time to get ready for work. Oh, my. Hope you have a good work, uh, work day, brother. Hope it goes nice and easy. Uh, so that's it. Three-hour session, guys. Nice. I know you go through cycles of productivity. I look forward to it. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for all the comments, by the way. Good conversation. I love it. And um, I'll see you guys. See you, Chicho. Hope to see more economics, politics videos soon. We will. We'll cover more. Um, I'm definitely going to come at it from the economics angle. Try to anyway. Okay. So tomorrow or today, I guess today is Saturday. Are we in Saturday? Are we? What are we in? Yeah, we're in Saturday. Live stream tonight, 10 p.m. Comic book hall, Pacific time. We're going to look at some comics and take a nice little break and look at some amazing covers and talk about some artists and writers okay hope you guys have a great night great morning great evening great afternoon thank you for the participation and thank you for all the people um, the couple of people that I caught uh, that subbed and uh, and uh, what's the other one called subbed and primed and all that jazz I'll learn all the lingo okay that's it for now I'll see you guys in about uh, another less than 24 hours. Bye for now.